Hello, my name is Tanya Colwell and today in this presentation I will describe uh, the options that are currently available in Hampson Russell release 10.3 on spectral decomposition. So what is spectral decomposition? Spectral decomposition is also called time frequency analysis or spectral estimation and it is a tool that has a wide range of uh, applications in geoscience. The goal of spectral decomposition is to highlight features of the seismic trace uh, such as underlying periodicities that are not obvious in the time domain and thus aid the interpretation. Spectral decomposition has been successfully used in thin bed analysis, hydrocarbon detection, subsurface geological structure detection, a stratigraphic delineation and attenuation estimation. It has also found uh, its applications in seismic processing such as random and coherent noise attenuation, regularization and interpolation of seismic data. The latest Hampson Russell release uh, of the volume attributes program includes the following options on spectral decomposition. Uh, the basics, the basic ones such as the short time Fourier transform which is often called uh, spectral decomposition or another basic one the continuous wavelet transform we simply refer to it as wavelet transform and then more advanced techniques such as S transformed which is a hybrid of the first two methods basis pursuit and I will give, we will give you more details later on empirical mode decomposition and again a few advanced ones of empirical mode decompositions will be ensemble empirical mode decomposition EEMD and complete ensemble empirical mode decomposition CEEMD. A little bit on the short time for yet transform. So the goal of this technique is to decompose the seismic data, the seismic signal, into a series of overlapping short time windows and perform the Fourier transform on each of these windows. The fixed window lengths of uh, the method determines the trade-off between the time and frequency resolution. So if you use the longer window lengths, you may uh, get some spectral smearing. If applied to the entire seismic trace, the Fourier transform provides no information about local frequency variation. So it's usually performed on a short time window. Because the knowledge of how the frequency content of a signal varies in time is very useful. And here are the options that are available uh, as a result of short time Fourier transform. Uh, dominant frequency, average frequency cubes, various constant frequency amplitude cubes, also constant frequency phase cubes, and different event slices. Uh, for the demo purposes, I will use this uh, data set, uh, the F3 block data, uh, which is an example of a structurally complex seismic volume over the North Sea. Here's the visualization of it on the right side. So here is the input data set of F3 block data set. So this is a structurally complex folded data set. Um, and we are showing average frequency and dominant frequency spectral decomposition using uh, Fourier transform. So usually um, when looking at the results of the uh, spectral decomposition, we analyze the map slices, not, uh, not the seismic sections. So if I look on the map, and this is the map that's been cut between two horizons uh, of interest, uh, I can see this highlighted stratigraphic feature. So this is on the seismic data and this is on the dominant frequency. So the dominant frequency highlighted um, lower frequencies, uh, uh, which is probably a cent point bar. Here is another example of the average frequency cube. And it is co-rendered with the seismic volume. Um, so usually instead of looking at the 
attribute itself at the uh, spectral decomposition attribute uh, as a result. Quite frequently, we co-render the attribute with uh, seismic volume itself in order to highlight more features. So in this case, we are highlighting the fault running over the edge here, and we can clearly see the uh, uh, point bar. Besides looking at uh, frequency uh, sli amplitude slices, we can look at frequency phase cubes. Uh, so here I'm showing low frequency phase cubes and 31 uh, hertz phase cube, and then I can go to other higher frequencies. So usually uh, the phase spectrum is difficult to interpret as a vertical profile. Um, however, in this case we can see that on the lower phase cube the fold is being highlighted while on the uh, higher uh, phase cubes like these ones, 46 hertz and 62 hertz, that fold is not as noticeable. But again, usually uh, the phase information is easier to interpret on horizon or time slice. So moving on, the next technique that we have uh, available is the wavelet transform. It's also a fairly fast method to run. Um, uh, it, unlike the short time Fourier transform, it, uh, Fourier, it utilizes um, a variable size window, while Fourier transform utilizes a fixed size time window. So the wavelet transform compares the input seismic signal with the mother wavelet by taking the inner pro product of the two. So we can use a complex Ricker wavelet or complex Morlet wavelet as the mother wavelet, and we can output again various volumes, dominant average frequency, um, total energy cube, frequency at 80 percent uh, or, or phase cube slices. So here's the result of wavelet transform. Uh, on the left hand side I'm showing the input volume, uh, then the dominant frequency and the average frequency. So in comparison with Fourier transform, the wavelet transform shows better frequency resolution in this case. However, it is possible to enhance the time resolution of the Fourier transform by using a smaller window. But that will come again at the cost of the frequency resolution. As I mentioned before, there is always a trade-off between time and frequency resolution. And this was discussed in, de in great detail in the paper by Hall um, 2006 and by uh, Terry et al. in 2014. The S transform can be considered as a hybrid of short time Fourier transform and the continuous wavelet transform. Uh, the template uses sines and cosines like short time Fourier transform, but the analyzed signal is manipulated by a frequency dependent Gaussian taper. So similar to the continuous wavelet transform, the time frequency distribution of the S transform is variable. On the other hand, the S transform keeps the properties of the Fourier transform, such as uniform frequency sampling, for example, spectral amplitudes um, are independent of frequency, owing to the normalization of the Gaussian taper. And it also retains the original signal phase. Here is an example of, on the map that was done along the horizon F uh, S7, um, average along this horizon, and I'm showing amplitude envelope of the average frequency. So some of the features are really nicely highlighted here. Another example on the frequency amplitude cubes, such lower frequencies, and then how they change to higher frequencies. And then we also have a more advanced technique, which is showing beautiful results uh, in 10.3. And this is called basis pursuit. Uh, basis pursuit was introduced in 2004 um, when the authors uh, Pornigin and Castagna uh, pointed out that we can simplify the spectral decomposition problem and represent a seismic trace as a series of family wavelets 
that we are convolving with their associated reflection coefficients. So instead of using a single wavelet like we used in wavelet transform or in basis pursuit, here we're using a series of wavelets that we are convolving with uh, associated reflections of the trace plus some added uh, noise. So here is an example um, of the four methods I mentioned uh, on the, compared on the synthetic uh, data. Short time Fourier transform, continuous wavelet transform, S transform, and basis pursuit. So I'm showing time versus frequency variation. So the conventional methods show spectral smearing that's happening here. And well, basis pursuit uh, does not have that issue. Here is an output of time frequency phase maps of that synthetic trace that we generated. So similar again, time versus frequency and basis pursuit um, gives more clear and meaningful phase map uh, because it has the highest time frequency resolution. Empirical mode decomposition was developed at NASA uh, and introduced in 1998. It provides higher spectral spatial resolution than either uh, previous methods such as Fourier transform or wavelet transform, but it is very, very computationally expensive. There are two more advanced uh, forms of empirical mode decompositions that we implemented, and these are EEMD and CEMD. They're available here as a selection. Uh, for the complete theory, uh, I would recommend uh, to refer to the book on empirical mode decomposition for seismic time frequency analysis by Han and Der. And uh, here are a few results of ensemble empirical mode decomposition, EMD. Uh, it overcame a few pro problems that the original EMD uh, method had uh, and became more stable. So input seismic data, and here is the results highlighting this possible channel here. And, and here is the results of CEMD in comparison to wavelet transform. So on the synthetic example, so this is my synthetic examples that I used, and this is CEMD a result of time versus frequency. And again, time versus frequency in wavelet transform has a lot more uh, spectral smearing. And here is the parameters that are used uh, for, the, for the wavelet sampling uh, and so on. So the output, you notice that CEEMD gives higher time frequency resolution than uh, conventional wavelet transform. Um, a few more comparisons of uh, EMD and CEMD uh, at peak frequency volumes. So again, they are very, very comparable. The, the results both highlight similar features uh, really nicely. And here is the same on the frequency map. Very, very, very similar results between the two methods. So usually, again, we don't look at the uh, uh, frequ independent frequencies themselves. We do color blending just to uh, bring up uh, a few geological features to make sure they stand out. So here I did various combinations of um, RGB blending of 10 hertz, 30 hertz, hertz, 60 hertz, and so on. So this, these are the results that I get for the data set. So in summary, I would like to mention that empirical mode decomposition methods such as EMD and CEMD show higher frequency time resolution than the short time from year transform, wavelet transform, and S transform. As they provide more frequency variations than the above examples. However, they are sensitive to the signal-to-noise ratio, and they are more computationally expensive. Basis pursuit works well, even in the low signal-to-noise case, but it is also computationally expensive. So what we recommend usually is to analyze the, the principal frequency variations by running the basic methods, such as short-time Fourier transform, wavelet transform, or S transform first, and then once we identify these subtle changes in geology, 
then we recommend to moving on to these more advanced computation and the extensive methods on a smaller time window. Additionally, I want to mention that our Hampson Russell attributes package uh, offers other attribute computations besides spectral decomposition. So these are the ones that I covered today. But we have other methods such as bandwidth attributes, curvature attributes, edge enhancement attributes, energy ratio, multi-trace filters uh, to uh, highlight your uh, fr fractures and, and faults in the data which are commonly used for post-stack data, and uh, standard uh, single trace seismic attributes are also available. Also phase congruency attribute is implemented as well. So this concludes my presentation and thank you for your attention.